Snake, answer me! Snake! Snake! What's up? It's your boy Super Mario1990 coming at y'all with a Metal Gear Solid reaction video. So there's two bits of news from Metal Gear Solid. First up is a casting for the Metal Gear Solid movie. The second thing, it's a rumor, it's a rumor, but it's about a Metal Gear Solid 1 remake. Now, let's get to the casting. Um, actor I, Oscar Isaac has been cast to play Solid Snake. Now, the Metal Gear Solid movie has actually been a pre-production thing since the mid-2000s, right? I think about like 2007, it was in pre-production, like about a year or two before Uncharted. The Uncharted movie was in uh, pre-production. So, this is the first time that they actually ever cast an actor, which is cool, but at the same time, when it comes to video game adaptions, Hollywood kind of takes a while to do these kind of things because they already get heavy, heavily criticized anyway. So it's kind of like they want to be careful, take their time. It's actually good to hear that we have somebody for the title role, but nothing else has been really confirmed. There's a director, there's an actor, but as far as the story and plot goes, what they're saying is that the story is actually not going to be like a straight up rip of any other games. It's going to be its own original story, which to me is kind of questionable because the games are so good. You kind of want it to be based off of one of the games, especially the first one, I feel like. But they're going to go in an original direction. You don't know what it's going to be because they're not giving any details yet. Right. And there's no other characters confirmed. It's just Solid Snake and then the actor to play Solid Snake. But no other characters are confirmed. No other actors to play those characters are confirmed. So we're still kind of like in the pre, pre, pre stages. But at least we have, you know, someone to play Snake. That's the first. Um, and if you look at Uncharted, like Uncharted took so long. Like Mark Wahlberg was actually supposed to be Nate Drake back in like 2009, 2010, right? And, you know, that never happened, obviously. And it's to the point now where we're finally going to get an Uncharted movie in 2021, um, July 16th. And, of course, that's pandemic pending. But Tom Holland is uh, Nate Drake now, right? And Mark Wahlberg is Sully. Sully is Nate Drake's, you know, uh, mentor. So, so much time went in between that, that Mark Wahlberg aged to be so old to where he can't play Nate Drake no more. He can only play Nate Drake's mentor. Like, that's how long it took to get the ball rolling. So, Metal Gear Solid finally having its first casting. Let's hope it doesn't take another 10 years. It's already been over a decade. But, you know, that's that. And as far as Oscar Isaac goes, I actually never heard of the man, right? Because when I saw it on Twitter, I was like, okay, let me, let me research the man. So I IMDb'd him, and the funny thing was, I looked through like all the movies that he did. Four movies I actually saw, right? But I still didn't know the guy. It was kind of crazy. And one of those movies I saw quite a lot, um, all about the Benjamins, um, hilarious movie, right? And I'm like, he was in this one? He must have had a real short role, because I saw the movie like a million times, and I don't even remember the cat. So it was kind of like okay well we'll see how it works but i did see like a tad bit of likeness in him like a tad bit of likeness if you think about like the Metal Gear solid 2 um solid snake so i'm like i see a little bit in there but i just really hope he can get the uh the voice down pat that dark gruffy voice and then if he can have solid snake sarcasm because i think those two qualities are what made solid snake really iconic and really stand out like if the actor can embody that dark, gruff voice and have a sarcastic sense of humor. I think everything should just fall in line and he should be all right. But, you know, we don't know. And we'll see. The second thing, I'm really hyped about it. I should calm down because it's just a rumor. It's not legit. But there's supposed to be a rumor to be a Metal Gear Solid remake uh, and by Blue Point Games. Now, Blue Point Games, they're the ones that did the Metal Gear Solid HD remaster. Uh, where it was Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 remastered along with Metal Gear Solid Peace Walk, everybody's favorite handheld. Now, if you see your favorite handheld was Pokemon, I ain't gonna fight with you. That's cool. But I don't want to hear nothing else besides Metal Gear Solid Peace Walk. No, I'm just playing. But anyway, they combined those three. And they also worked on another favorite franchise of mine, Uncharted. Um, they did the Nate Drake Collection, which is the first three Uncharted games remastered. Now, to me, if it's gonna be Blue Point, doing a remaster to Metal Gear Solid 1, it sounds plausible because they've done Metal Gear Solid remasters before and they did come up a remake of um, Demon's Souls. 
So in their resume, they can do remakes and they've done Metal Gear Solid before. So it's not, it's not that impossible to believe that that might be on the works, but Blue Point Games themselves or Konami, they haven't officially confirmed it themselves. And I do remember a few months back, um, right before the Tokyo Game Show, there was a rumor of a Metal Gear Solid 1 remaster as well as Metal Gear 2, 3, and 4 being uh, remastered. And Metal Gear 1 being remade, I mean. Metal Gear 1 being remade and Metal Gear 2, 3, and 4 being remastered. When the Tokyo Game Show came up, nobody said nothing about that. So I was a little salty because I was so hyped up like, ooh, 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 this is gonna happen. And I was like hyped up and then I'm like, oh, now I'm salty. Which is probably why that phrase, you know, take it with a grain of salt even came into play. I don't even know what that means. I know the context of it. I just don't know where that phrase came from. But anyway, I was salty. But now we're getting another bit of news that it's going to be a remake. They're not mentioning the 2, 3, and 4 being remastered, just that Metal Gear 1 is supposed to be remade. Now, if this is legit, this would be dope. And I would just really hope that if they do this, they can retain all the voice actors that they possibly can. Um, because the voice actor in Metal Gear Solid 1, I feel like that's what made that game so iconic and made that game stand out and just help that game just like revolutionize the gaming industry because at that time i mean they weren't the first game to voice act they were one of the first games to have voice acting but they were the first ones to do it on such a high quality like it was hollywood like theater-esque you know type acting like they really took it seriously the cinematics everything like and even the music like this uh the the musical score actually brought everything to life too like it was like the first like real movie ex movie like experience that you had in a video game. And now you fast forward to today, every video game is like that now. Like everyone, like even a sports game, like you can you can play NBA 2K. NBA 2K, my career has a story mode. So it's like everybody is doing stories now. Everything is more cinematic now. And I think that Metal Gear Solid 1, because of the high quality that they had, that pretty much just set that trend to be like an everyday thing now today like it's mandatory that your game has a story pretty much right so i feel like if you can keep the voice acting on par to what they had in 98 because if you look at these games right now and look at the 98 Metal Gear solid from a voice acting standpoint that game still holds up and is still one of the best today i feel like even though like it set a trend it still actually is in there with the trend you know of cinematic um realistic dramatic um voice acting in games so i feel like if you can retain as many actors as possible and keep the script as similar as possible to the original 98 script you're gonna be all right like honestly i think you can just you can just just audio dub just audio dub all the audio from the 98 original like audio dub it during the kodak moments audio dub it during the cutscenes. Maybe you just add some more in the gameplay because the, the gameplay was kind of like it was a little dull. Like you had the genome soldiers, huh? What's that noise? Huh? Who's who printed these? Like they was real dumb. Like maybe you kind of like increase their intelligence just a little bit, make the game like a little more challenging, make them look a little more competent. I mean, it was entertaining back in the day. It's still entertaining to this day. Still make it entertaining, but kind of like just update smartness just a little bit. But other than that, I feel like if they can keep the voice acting the same. Audio dub probably ain't gonna be possible because it was 98. You're gonna pay them for 98. Like, them royalties might be a beast. Who knows? But I think if you can just keep as many voice actors as you possibly can, David Hayter has to be Solid Snake, though. Like, that's the one thing that has to be. Like, you have to have David Hayter. David Hayter is Solid Snake. David Hayter, for the most part, is Big Boss. We've seen a David Hayter list Metal Gear Solid before, and that didn't go over well with a lot of people. I was one of them. Like, I, I thought Metal Gear Solid could do no wrong up until Phantom Pain came out. Phantom Pain should have broke my heart. Like, that that hurt me, man. Like, Phantom Pain, like, I... And there was some good stuff going on in that game. But overall, especially from a story standpoint, that game hurt me. That broke my heart, man. Like, the only other bad Metal Gear Solid game was Twin Snakes. And I'm going to get to that later. But anyway, like I said, with that um, voice acting, I hope that's on par I really do want to see a remake. And like I said, I don't want to see a remake be like Twin Snakes though. Now, Twin Snakes was a little over the top. Uh, the thing that really pissed me off about Twin Snakes was just the the sequences, the action sequences of Solid Snake. That was just, he was doing a little too much. They had the man backflipping, you know, launching off of rockets, like they was trampolines, shooting rocket launchers in the air. 
he was just doing some crazy stuff and I'm looking like, okay, who at Nintendo thought this was cute? Like, who, who dropped the ball on that? Like, y'all got Solid Snake acting like he Gray Fox. Y'all doing a little too much. Like, y'all can calm that down. Look, Gray Fox do all the anime type stuff. Solid Snake has to be more grounded, right? So that was just crazy. And as much as I bash Twin Snakes, the funny thing about it is I've actually never played Twin Snakes. I've only seen a YouTube playthrough because I was bummed out about not owning it back in the day. But when I saw that YouTube playthrough, I was like, dang, I dodged a bullet. I'm glad I didn't get that game. Because at the time, um, I had a GameCube, right, in 2001, 2002, around the time the game came out. And um, my GameCube broke down on me before I could even get Twin Snakes. And I was already pissed. I was already over Nintendo because I started with Nintendo. Like, I, I had a Super Nintendo in 95, right? That's my introduction to gaming. And then I had a Nintendo 64. I had me a Game Boy Color. And then I had me a GameCube. And when the GameCube broke down, I was pissed. I'm like, okay, my brother got all the good systems. Like, my little brother, he started off with PlayStation 1 and he moved to Xbox. And he playing all the mature stuff. He playing Metal Gear Solid. He playing Siphon Filter. He playing Grand Theft Autos. I can't get no Grand Theft Auto on Nintendo, right? So I'm looking like, okay, I want what he having, right? So I wanted a PS2, but I didn't get a PS2. A regret I have even to this day. I ended up getting the Xbox. Now, the main reason why I got the Xbox was because the internal memory was so huge and you didn't need to worry about memory cards. So I was like, okay, cool, I ain't gotta worry about no memory cards. And my stupid self at the time, too, thought that Xbox pretty much made the same games as PS2. I wasn't, a, I didn't know a lot about console exclusives. I really wasn't like deep into the game and all like that to even know that certain companies had certain games. I'm thinking like Xbox pretty much got the same stuff PS2 got, right? I just, I don't see Halo for PS2, but I just pretty much see everything else, right? Because when Metal Gear Solid 2 came out, Xbox had Metal Gear Solid 2 a few months later. So I'm thinking like, okay, well, since they had Metal Gear Solid 2, they're gonna get Metal Gear Solid 3, right? When Metal Gear Solid 3 come out. Well, Metal Gear Solid 3 came out for the PS2. And I'm sitting there with my Xbox like, yeah, okay, cool. Like, you know, um, yeah, so, you know, Microsoft, um, Snake Eater just dropped. When well, we gonna get Snake Eater, because, you know, Mega Solid 2 dropped. It took y'all a few months, but y'all finally got it. So, well, we gonna get Mega Solid 3. And Microsoft had me looking stupid. I'm like, oh, so we really just started getting Mega Solid 3 then? Okay, fine. I moved on to a PS3. And then I got me a PSP, PS4, PS Vita. I'm trying to holler at PS5 next year. So, I've been playing for life ever since. But, to, you know, let y'all know, I was, I was a little bit of a console hoe. No, Nintendo was my first love. I had a little fling with the Xbox and now I'm married to PlayStation now. I never messed with Sega and Atari. She was before my time. But anyway, uh, with all that being said, I dodged Twin Snakes. I just don't want to see Metal Gear Solid Remake be anything like Twin Snakes. I'm sorry. And the other thing that I wonder about too, I wonder about character models. Like how are these characters going to look in the remake? Obviously they're going to be photorealistic. I mean, obviously. They're going to be movie-like. But at the same time, like the look, what's the look gonna be modeled after? Because Solid Snake has had um, at least three different looks. Like you had the Metal Gear Solid 1 Solid, uh, Solid Snake, which was a polygon, right? Because that's what the 98 graphics did for the PS1. PS2, he had like longer hair, he had a beard. He was like real scruffy. I had to kind of adjust to him in Metal Gear Solid 2. I was like, oh man, like, cause he, he cut his, uh, he grew his hair out and his hair was blonde. I'm like, okay. I thought his hair was like black or brown and like shorter, man, what's, what's this about? And so, you know, you had that, then Metal Gear Solid 4, Metal Gear Solid 4 was just really sad because his telomeres were kind of like messed up, right? Because he was the clone of this big, huge war hero, right? And he was used for war purposes, but what they did was they accelerated his aging. So he wasn't supposed to live as long as the average human being because they didn't want him to be like a prisoner of war and give like trade secrets to another country. They were fearful that that may happen. So he made his, uh, his aging accelerated, so he dies quicker. So he was like 40 years old, looking like he was 80. Like old Snake, he looked like, he looked like the Monopoly man with a futuristic eye patch and no top hat. It was crazy, it was like, dang. That's probably why he had his own, um, why they had the Metal Gear Solid, you know, board game at the time. But anyway, it's like, kind of like, you know, you had three different Solid Snake models, at least, right? I think there, there was a few more, but off the top of my head that I can remember those three. And it's like, what's he gonna look like? Because with the developers, when they made the original Metal Gear Solid in the 98, they said that Snake was supposed to be based off of Christopher Walken's face. 
and Jean-Claude Van Damme's body, which is kind of funny to me because I'm like, oh, you can't really see that in the 98 version because it's, it's a polygon character, so you can't really see it. But it's like, imagine if Blue Point was to stay true to that vision, to see Christopher Walken's face on, you know, Solid Snake, and then, you know, he walked around ripped like he's Jean-Claude Van Damme, right? Just don't give him Christopher Walken's voice. That's the only thing I ask you. Don't give Solid Snake Christopher Walken's voice because that's going to be off. I'm sorry. But it's just, it's just, it's kind of makes you wonder, like, how is it going to look? And then the other characters, too, because when you play Mega Solid 4, you saw what Colonel Campbell looked like. Like, this, these are PS3 graphics, right? Looking really good, you know, especially for its time. I think it still holds up today. So it's like, you, you, saw, you saw Colonel Campbell, you saw Naomi, you saw Mei Ling, and you saw Hal Emmer, and you saw, that, like, Naomi, she was, she was beautiful. Like, she was fine in the first Metal Gear Solid. Like, just the codex screen alone, she was fine, right? And then you play Metal Gear Solid 4, and she like a different kind of fan. Like, whoa, like, I knew she was hot, but I didn't know she was like that. Same with Mei Ling. Like, Mei Ling was really pretty, right? And then you see Mei Ling in the fourth one, and it's like, whoa, all right. So I'm like, I'm wondering, are we going to get, like, those models from them? But are we going to get them? Because when you think about it, like, Metal Gear Solid was released in 1998, but the game story takes place in 2005. So for its time, it was a, it was a future, it was like a, a near future setting for its time. So it's like, there's been a nine year gap between Metal Gear Solid 1 and 4. So I'm wondering like, are the other characters gonna like their Metal Gear Solid 4 characters, but just like nine years younger? Or are they gonna go with like a different look altogether? And then at the same time too, you wonder if modernism is gonna uh, come into play because they might try to like modernize the looks. Like, oh, this is the style that's more in now, as opposed to what they was doing back then. That's something I really don't hope that they do, because like I said, Metal Gear Solid was stuck in a particular time period. And Metal Gear Solid, they, they were like, they weren't wearing normal clothes. They weren't trying to fit in. They weren't trying to be like a different, like, like different types of people. They were like, they just had their own world and their own setting. So I hope that they, like the style and the looks stick to the 98 original as much as it can. Just be like photorealistic. But I am curious to see what Solid Snake is going to look like. Because when you play Twin Snakes, that's one thing I'll give Twin Snakes. Twin Snakes for its time, graphically did look really good. It was just a little weird. If you played the first one, it was a little weird because you had to adjust to the looks. Like, whoa, wait a minute, they have eyes now? Because the polygon, when you look at the polygon characters, it's kind of hard to see their eyes. But when you saw their eyes, it was like, whoa, they look real now. But at the same time, they, they look a little funny, though, because you're so used to playing Metal Gear Solid 1. But... I just, I'm really interested to see how they're going to look, like how Meryl's going to look, you know, like how, how that's going to go. And um, the other thing too, I kind of wonder too, like uh, what kind of like moments are they going to recreate? Like I know my favorite Metal Gear Solid moment, me and my brother, um, was the whole um, Kodak thing with Meryl. Remember Meryl's number? You got to get Meryl's number. President Baker is dying and he tells you like, yo, Meryl can help you out, right? She knows the base, you know, just as good as I do, right? She can help you with everything, right? Reach her on her Kodak. Her number is, and then he forgot her number. He blanked out, and Snake was mad. He was like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Her number's on the back of the CD case, right? Now, we were slow. It took us two weeks to figure this out. Now, when he said CD case, we wasn't thinking the actual CD case that your game came with. And the funny thing is about me and my brother, like, we keep our stuff. Like, when we, we buy a game or any type of media, we keep our stuff, we keep our instruction booklets, we keep our discs, we keep our, uh, you know, our disc covers, we keep everything clean, you know, we, we got it together, right? So we had it on hand, we just didn't know that's what he was talking about, because Baker hands you this actual disc, you know, in the game, right? So we can like, oh, the little disc that he gave us, right? So we pressing the inventory button, you know, pressing the item button, like we pressing the, the uh, was it L2? L2 for items, R2 for weapons. So yeah, we hold down um, L2, and we scrolling through looking for the disc, right? Oh, that was the disc right there. And it says, oh yeah, Metal Gear test data. We're looking like, okay, yeah, cool, but Meryl number should be on the thing, right? He said Meryl number was on the back of the, on the little thing thing. And so we're thinking like, okay, well, maybe that's not it. Maybe go to the nuclear warhead storage building. There was some computers, right? Maybe get on the computer. So we like get on the computer. We got the thing equipped, right? We press the circle button in front of the computer, like punch the computer, thinking that it'll prompt something, right? Nothing happened. So we pissed off like, man, what's going on? Like, how did we get Meryl's number on the thing? I just came up with an idea to be like, you know what? What we're going to do is we're going to press the select button and we're going to dial every number on the Kodak, right? Because Meryl's number is bound to be one of these. We're just going to find it this way, right? 
And so I had an index card with a number two pencil sitting right there. Like, okay, when we get to Meryl's number, we're going to write it down and we're going to put Meryl's name at the top of it. So when we play this game, we're going to remember this number, right? And so he's like, you know, he punched the numbers in, punched the man, punched the man, punched the man. And, you know, he's getting no response, right? And so I'm just looking around. I'm looking like, it's been two weeks. How come we ain't? Back to CD. What are you talking about? Back to CD case. What are you talking about? And I look down and I'm looking at the CD case, the actual CD case that the game comes and It's right next to the PlayStation. Because we're in the living room, you know, playing, right? On, on a Saturday. And I'm looking like, wait a minute. Because I started to remember there was a screenshot of Snake talking with somebody on the Kodak. And I'm like, I think he's talking about this. And so I picked it up, right? Now, my brother, he's got the original copy. Um, because he had the PlayStation, like I said, back at that time. I was playing with him on his system. I got mine for the PS3 when I had the PS2 version, back of compatible. So, I still remember this right here. I'm like, oh, that's what he was talking about. And it had Meryl's name on the thing. I was like, that's what he meant by back of the CD case. We slow. We were trying to do all this other stuff. Okay, it's right here. And so, we put the number in. And so, that was like, that was a really, really funny moment. And so, I wonder how, because they were breaking the fourth wall, right? So I wonder how like that would be translated to today. Like would they do the same exact thing or would they do it differently? Or would Baker just actually like know Meryl's number off the top of her head? Like, yeah, 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 like, you know, contact my girl Meryl. She know the base inside and out like I do. Uh, her number is 140.15, you know, who knows how they gonna do it. But I just hope they like recreate cool moments like that. And at the same time too, like the action sequences, I want them to be contained. I want them to be normal for it's all snake anyway. Like don't do that, don't do that twin snake stuff. Just keep it regular, keep it normal. Let Gray Fox do all that little anime stuff. Like he's the cool one that does all the little cool little stunts. So it'll be nice to see that stuff. Like just the whole game and just like realistic, just photorealistic graphics. That'd be really, really nice because Metal Gear Solid 1 to this day too, they still had top-notch cutscenes whether it was the voice acting, the cinematics, how everything went down. I want to see it all. I really want to see it be the exact same, just with updated graphics. And of course, improved controls too. Like the controls are outdated, you know, holding the square button to shoot somebody. Like it needs to be trigger buttons. You need to have an aim button too. You need to have first person view shooting too. Like first person view mode and then like aim the weapons. That'll be nice. Um, something that Mega Solid has always did after Mega Solid 1 came out. So hopefully they do that. And I think that it'll end up being, it'll probably end up being my favorite game of all time, maybe, because Mega Solid 1, as good as it was, Mega Solid 4 was always my favorite game of all time when it came out. And the reason I say this is because when you play Mega Solid 4, like, you play the games leading to it, and, you know, those games are so good. Like, as a saga, you were so invested in it, into it, you know, emotionally, physically, mentally, you were so invested into it, that when the fourth one came out, Cause at the time it felt like the fourth one was gonna be the last one. Like they weren't gonna do any other Metal Gear Solids after that one, but they ended up doing that. But at the time it felt like it was gonna be the last one. So you wanted a good ending to the whole saga, right? And so Metal Gear Solid 4, they just hit you with so much like jaw dropping, like new revelations that it made you look at the other games differently because it was like, whoa, wait a minute. Like in Metal Gear Solid 4, it was like, wait a minute, hold up. Liquid Snake wasn't really in Ocelot's body. Ocelot was just acting this whole time. Or it was like, yo, Sigurd was the darker chief, paramedic was Dr. Clark, and Major Zero is the main villain that got this whole thing started with the whole Patriot system and all this and that. Like, whoa. So when you go back to play Mega Solid 3, you look at those three characters differently. Like, whoa, wait, wait a minute, hold up. Before, y'all was real cool. I was rooting for y'all, but when Mega Solid 4 came out and I learned the truth, y'all all some snakes in here. So it was kind of funny. It was like, okay, you're experiencing the game through like a whole different perspective. And looking at it you know differently like the dynamics and the shifts like everything just shifted you know dynamically and a franchise like i haven't been familiar with too many franchises doing that like to have so many games across all those years and then they have a sequel that comes out that makes you question everything that you saw before like when you revisit it's like whoa wait it's a brand new experience like wait hold up wait so this is what they was talking about on this one. Wait a minute, that's what happened? Like, well, wait, what? This person was this? Like, what? It was crazy. It was like, man, I've never seen that domino effect. Like, how do you have a profound effect to make a game? Like, Metal Gear Solid 4 made Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3. It made them brand new again. 
Even though you played them a thousand times, you play four and you go back to the other ones. It's like, whoa, it's a new experience for me now because I know some new stuff that I didn't even see coming. And that's why I say Mega Solid 4 is always, um, I will always say it's the best you know, of all time to me. Um, hard to see another game bested, we'll see. Um, this Mega Solid 1 remake, if it's a real thing, might be really close. I think it'll just be, I think it'll end up just beating out Mega Solid 1's original. If they do a good job with this remake. If the remake keeps everything the same, just giving me updated graphics with cool action sequences that are grounded, you know, for Solid Snake and just look realistic, it'll be all good. But like I said, that's just a rumor. It's just a rumor, it's not been confirmed, but I'm really hoping that that's the next best step, man. Everybody's getting remakes. Like Resident Evil 2 got a remake. Resident Evil 3 got a remake. Mafia got a remake. Demon Souls, that's that's not my type of genre, not my type of game, but that got a remake. Um, there's a lot of people who are fans of that. So it's like, why can't Metal Gear Solid get a remake? You know what I mean? So I'm hoping that's a real thing. And um, if it is, uh, let me know, like, what are y'all looking forward to? Like, do you want to see a remake of that game? And if you do see a remake, what do you want to see them change? What do you want to see them improve upon? What do you want to see them keep the same? Um, you know, or what do you want to see them, you know, innovate? Uh, but yeah, just watch Mario 1990 and I'm out. Peace, ain't.